It's vacation finally. You can buy a ticket to an unforgettable island full of entertainment. The helicopter takes you there. Unfortunately, you won't be able to relax much because you need to solve puzzles in addition to having fun. And at the end of the video, count how well you went through it. You're going to have fun all day. Challenging riddles require concentration and attention, but you want to solve them in a relaxed way this time. Enjoy! The first thing you do is go to a beach party. Sun, ocean, hot, white sand. You take a soda and go dancing. All of a sudden, the music stops. You ask the DJ what happened. Someone pulled the wire from the speakers, she says. You go behind the stage and see five chords. All of them have different colors. Two of them need to be inserted into the speakers. Which ones? Hurry up, save the party! Red and green. There are marks with corresponding colors in the left corner of each speaker. The party goes on. You're tired and hungry, so you go to a restaurant. There's a huge buffet with hot dishes. You take two sandwiches and sit down at the table. After a delicious meal, you decide to have some fresh fruit for dessert. You come up to the table with bananas, apples, pineapples, and kiwis. Some of these fruits are not fresh. Which of them, and why is that? All the fruit trays are almost empty, but there are a lot of kiwis left. People don't take them since they're not very fresh. After lunch, you go to the beach. The sand is so hot that you can fry eggs on it, so you put on your shoes. You see a group of people playing volleyball. You want to join them, get closer, but the game field is empty. Was it a mirage, or did the people leave the spot so quickly that you didn't notice? What do you think? It was a mirage, since there are no footprints in the sand. The sun is hot, and you decide to go into the jungle to hide in the shadows. You go out into a wide clearing and see several people sitting in the lotus position. It's a meditation session. People relax with their eyes closed and do not see that you've come. You carefully sit down next to them and realize that something is wrong with all these people. What is it exactly? They don't just sit, they're floating a couple inches off the ground. Who are they? You get scared and run away from this place. You run through the jungle and see three roads. One is littered with broken glass. There are plants with thorns on the second road, and you see hot coals on the third one. Which one will you choose? Actually, you can go everywhere. You put on your shoes on the beach, remember? In the very center of the island, you find a big old house. Its roof is destroyed and the windows are broken. But there's music coming from the building. You look inside and see a group of people in raincoats dancing to techno. You join the party and notice that each person has long fangs peeking out of their mouth. The dancers turn to you and look unfriendly. At first, you get scared, but then you realize these people are only pretending to be vampires. Fangs and cloaks are part of the masquerade. How do you know they're not vampires? The roof of the building is destroyed. The sunlight gets inside. The vampires should be afraid of it. You keep dancing, and at that moment, you get terrified. The dancers aren't vampires, but they're not humans either. Why do you think so? There's a mirror on the wall, and only you are reflected in it. You run out of the building and go through the jungle. White pigeons fly past you, and in the distance you can hear people's voices. You make your way through the bushes and find yourself at a wedding ceremony. People are sitting on the chairs. A bride, a groom, his friend, and two bridesmaids are standing in front. Everything seems fine, but then you realize that one of these people is an alien. Who?
the bride. You can see that she has three hands. It doesn't scare you too much. After the ceremony, the party begins. You speak with the guests, take drinks and snacks. An old man gets on the stage to deliver a speech. He says that he has a gift to the newlyweds, an elixir that makes a person younger by five years and prolongs life. The same elixir is inside every drink, and everyone can drink it. All the guests rush to the table and grab glasses. Someone drinks two glasses at once. Someone five to six glasses in a row. Someone quickly drinks only one. And among all the people, there is an old lady. She slowly drinks her cocktail and becomes a little younger. Why did the elixir affect her, but not the other guests? The elixir was in ice cubes. The old lady drank for a long time, and the ice in the glass had time to melt. You leave the party and continue exploring the island. Ahead, you can see a tunnel with a warning sign. Beware the phantom inside. A guy and a girl come up with you. They offer to run through the tunnel to check if there are really ghosts there. So it won't be scary, you all run holding hands with each other. The girl is in the middle. It's cold and slippery inside the tunnel. You can't hear anything. You're approaching the exit and finally got out. It was a little scary, you say. It's good that I was in the middle, said the girl. Me too. I wasn't afraid, says the guy. At this point, you realize there was a phantom inside the tunnel. How did you figure that out? Three people ran through the tunnel, and only one could be in the middle, the girl. Whose hand was the guy holding? You get scared and leave this place. Evening. You go back to the hotel and see that it's on fire. There's a fire on your floor. You run inside. Fire is everywhere. You have two valuable things that you want to take away. A small safe with documents and money and a laptop with your work. You need to choose one thing. Take the computer. Most safes can withstand high temperatures, but a laptop is unlikely. You can find your safe after the fire. You've got a different room on the 10th floor. It's spacious with an ocean view. You're about to go to bed, but someone is knocking on the door. It's the administrator. She says there's a snake in your room, but you need to find it. Look around and find the reptile. Do you see those beaded curtains behind the second room? Among the beads, you can notice the outline of a snake. You release the snake into the jungle, return to your hotel, and notice footprints on the parquet floor. Oh. Someone was here and wanted to steal something. You call the administrator and tell her what happened. She has already found three suspects, and you need to guess which one of them broke into the room. There are two guys wearing shoes and a barefoot girl. Who will you choose? The girl couldn't leave these footprints. The guy who's standing next to her has soaking wet clothes on. His feet are also wet, but he has put on his sandals to hide them. The footprints in the room were wet. The second guy's clothes are dry. The girl's clothes are dry too, which means the guy wearing wet clothes got into your room. You can't fall asleep in the new room. It's already 3 a.m. and you decide to take a walk on the beach. Suddenly, you hear some noise. A beautiful girl is standing outside the window. She's smiling and looking at you. <laughs> at first, you smile back, but then you pick up your stuff and quickly run out of the room. You call the administrator and say that you won't stay in this hotel any longer. Why did you do that? Your room is on the 10th floor. The girl looked at you outside the window and you got scared. You can't sleep until morning and decide to leave this island. You sit on the sand and wait. A helicopter arrives and lowers a rope ladder. You're about to climb it, but at this moment, another helicopter arrives. It has the same rope ladder too. Now you need to choose the right helicopter.
take a closer look at the pilot of the first helicopter. It's an alien. You get into the second helicopter and fly away. The first one turned out to be a spaceship. Your vacation has come to an end, which means it's time to see what you've achieved. Zero to four points. Try to solve more logic puzzles and you'll be able to do better. Or maybe you just decided not to strain yourself too much and relax on this vacation. Five to eight points. Not bad. The party and the celebration atmosphere didn't dull your attentiveness and resourcefulness. But you can do better. Nine to 12 points. You were able to relax because you not only had fun, but also trained your brain. 13 to 15 points. You can quickly solve logic riddles and find a way out of any problematic situation. But don't forget to rest and relax your mind. Uh-oh, someone stole expensive jewelry from Mrs. Doris's hotel room. It happened at around 6 a.m. When the police came, the hotel owner told them that there was a heavy snowfall early in the morning. It destroyed all the evidence. Suddenly, one of the police officers spotted an infamous criminal. He had been accused of committing several burglaries, but always managed to get away with it. The man denied being at the hotel at that time. I only came a half hour ago, he claimed. The police officers immediately understood he was lying. How? There's a thick layer of snow on the criminal's car. If he had been driving to the hotel, there would be no snow on the hood. It would have melted or got blown away by the wind. And since it's sunny now, it can't be new snow. You are wandering through the forest trying to find the way to a bus station. Suddenly, you meet a man. He tells you that soon, you'll see a crossroads. There will be a post with several signboards. The right signboard will lie, and the left one will tell the truth. A bit later, you indeed see this post. The right sign on it says, To the bus station. And the left one reads, To the forest. Where is the station? If the right sign lies and the left sign will lead you back to the forest, go straight and you'll get to the station. Damien is an artist. Recently, he has had problems with money. That's why he had to sell the only valuable thing he had, an expensive painting of a 17th century artist. The man who bought it showed the canvas to his friend Matthew, a police detective. After looking at the picture carefully, Matthew asked for Damien's address. He visited the artist and asked him where he had gotten the painting from. The man said, My granddad left it to me. You're lying, the detective said. You painted it yourself. How did he figure it out? There are electrical power lines in the picture, but they didn't exist in the 17th century. The police found out a diamond smuggler was going to leave the country through the largest airport in the city. They didn't know who it was and where this person was flying. That's why they searched the baggage of everyone who was departing on that day. Most people were angry and nervous, but one man was calm and polite. The airport security officers didn't find anything suspicious in his suitcase. But after the man got the sticker checked on his baggage, police asked him to come with him. They suspected he was the smuggler they were looking for. How did they understand it? While the security officer was putting the sticker on his suitcase, the man surreptitiously put his coat inside. The diamonds must be hidden in this coat. Mr. Carter, a rich man who collected antiques, asked Detective Morris to visit him. When the detective arrived, the collector said, I've just got a precious statuette, but I need to go away on business for a week, and I'm afraid someone will break into my house. My neighbors are so suspicious. Of course, the statuette is insured, but still. Detective Morris had some other urgent things to do. He promised to come back in the evening to figure out how to deal with the situation. But when he arrived several hours later, Mr. Carter rushed to him. I was away for an hour, no more. I drove my sister to the doctor, but when I came back, the statuette was gone. Detective Morris didn't believe the collector. Why?
When he left the house in the afternoon, he noticed an apple lying in front of the left part of the gate. It's still there. But for a car to drive through, both parts of the gate have to be open. This means that Mr. Carter lied about leaving his home by car. A man with a bandage around his head came to a police station. I was hitchhiking when the car stopped. The driver asked me to check if one of the tires was flat. I bent over to look, and he hit me on the head. When I came to my senses, I found out he had taken all my money and cell phone. I remember he had a big car, large eyebrows, and a mustache. The police had a suspect. They found him in a cafe. But the man said it couldn't be him. He changed the tires on his car two weeks ago, and since then, the car had been parked near the cafe. The detective realized the man was lying right away. How? There's a no parking sign near the cafe. No car could be staying there for two weeks. Mr. and Mrs. Williams had to go on a business trip. It was a sudden and urgent matter. They didn't have time to take the money they had to the bank. That's why they decided to hide it under the doormat. When they returned, the money was gone. Three people visited the apartment while the owners were away. The Williams' neighbor, he helped them fix the TV. A housekeeper came to clean the apartment. And an electrician visited to deal with some lighting problems. Who took the money? It was the housekeeper. She was the only person who had any reason to look under the doormat. Laura took part in an experiment. She was locked in a room and had to crack a riddle to get out of it. On the table, she found a note with the numbers 11, 69, 96, and 88. The girl needed to figure out what they had in common. Can you do the same? All these numbers can be read in the same way if you position them upside down. A man on a motorbike crashed Mr. Ruby's store window, grabbed a dozen expensive watches, and drove away. When the police arrived, Mr. Ruby told them he was almost sure it had been his nephew, Patrick. The officers went to visit the guy. Because of a heavy downpour, they got there in only an hour. Patrick was at home, together with his friend. Look at the weather! I haven't been outside since yesterday. Patrick's friend confirmed his words. But the police didn't believe this story and arrested Patrick. Why? The guy's helmet is hanging on his motorbike. If it had been there since the previous day, it would be filled with rainwater now. Look at these two girls and their fridges. One of them has never had enough money until recently. A month ago, she won the lottery. Which girl is that? It's the girl on the left. High heels, a flashy dress, and a fridge filled to the brim. She looks like a person who has finally managed to get their hands on big money. Look at these people lounging near a swimming pool. They all seem to be wealthy. But in fact, only one of them is a millionaire. The girl sitting under the palm tree is wearing a lot of gold jewelry. But all this gold is fake. It leaves greenish marks on her body. The girl walking past the swimming pool is wearing sandals with a large logo on them. But the name of this brand is written wrong, so it's fake. The guy who's lying on the floating mattress is playing a game on his phone. But instead of an apple, there's a strawberry on his gadget. The man who's watering the plants is the millionaire we're looking for. There's a Mercedes keychain hanging out of his pocket. He also left a $100 tip for the waiter. Ethan and his girlfriend Anne went to explore a cave and got lost. After some time, they came across two people, a man and a woman. The man, bearded and rough-looking, had a shovel in his hands. I've been stuck here for a week. I know how to get to the surface, but I need your help. Come with me. The young woman exclaimed, Don't trust him. He's a criminal. Follow me. I've been here longer than him. I know where the exit is. 
who should the guys believe? Ethan and Anne decided to follow the man. If the girl had been in the cave for more than a week, why does she look so tidy and has fresh flowers in her hair? Several gold bullion bars were stolen from a bank. The police figured out where they could be and who could take them. Without wasting time, they arrived at the main suspect's house. But since they were in a hurry, they forgot to bring a warrant. The man told them he wouldn't allow them to search his house. Come back with a warrant and we'll talk. An hour later, the police officers came back with the needed document. They thoroughly searched the house and garden but didn't find the gold. Suddenly, one of the officers exclaimed, I know where he hid the gold. Have you figured it out? The gold is in the swimming pool. When the police visited the man for the first time, the level of water in it was lower. A man shaves every day, but still has a long and thick beard. How is it possible? The man is a barber, and he shaves his clients. One day, a famous soccer coach went missing right from the locker room. The detective has three suspects, and all of them are from the coach's team. Brandon says that after training, he stayed on the pitch to practice a bit more. He hasn't been to the locker room yet. Andrew swears that straight after the training, he went outside to meet with his girlfriend. And James claims that when he was leaving the locker room, the trainer was still there. Who is the criminal? It's Andrew. He said he hadn't been to the locker room yet, but he's wearing not the uniform, but his street clothes. Five people were asked to step over a pencil that was lying on the floor. But for some reason, none of them managed to do it. Have you figured out why? The pencil was placed near the wall. How tricky. Erica wants to find her true love, so she's visiting a speed dating event. She talks to three strangers. Each guy tells her some brief facts about himself. Victor says, I'm an architect. I've recently built the largest skyscraper in this city, and now I want to settle down and find a beautiful wife. Jason says, I run my own bakery chain. I've never had any serious relationships because I was too busy with my work. And Edgar says, I recently got fired, but it's okay because my parents are billionaires. I'd like to find a soulmate to travel the world. Who uh -oh. should Erica choose? Take a closer look at Victor. His teeth are too sharp. He doesn't eat or drink anything, and he doesn't have any shadow. It's not safe to date a vampire. As for Jason, he clearly wore a wedding ring. There's a tan line on his ring finger. Therefore, he's a liar. That's why Erica should choose Edgar. After the event, Erica enters her favorite Indian restaurant near her apartment. She makes an order, puts her bag on one of the tables, and goes to the restroom. After a couple of minutes, she returns and finds out that oh, someone no. had stolen her bag. The waiter says... I saw someone with a neck tattoo running into the restaurant's second floor. Erica goes upstairs and finds three possible suspects. Can you spot the thief? This lady is the only one who has a big enough paper bag to hide Erica's bag. And there's also a wig inside her bag. The next day, Edgar calls Erica and invites her on a date. He offers her to pick the place. Erica wants to test Edgar's logical skills. So, she sends him this rebus. Can you help Edgar show up to the right place? This rebus means Central Square. 
Finally, Edgar and Erica meet at the central square. Uh -oh. They spot that one of the people in the crowd is a time traveler. Can you guess who? It's this guy. Who's jogging in wooden shoes in the 21st century? Edgar invites Erica to an exclusive party. But unfortunately, the guard refuses to let them in without a password. Edgar says, oh, come on, give us a hint. The guard says, okay, what time of the day reads the same backward and forward? Can you help the guys crack the code? The correct answer is noon. The next day, Erica invites Edgar over for dinner. She has some candies in the kitchen. They look similar but have three different flavors. Three orange, two strawberry, and five grape candies. Suddenly, the lights turn off in the entire building. Now the kitchen is completely dark. How many candies must Erica take out to make sure she has at least one candy of each flavor? To figure out the minimal number of candies, subtract one from the smallest number and then add all the larger numbers to it. And you'll get nine. Erica locked her computer with a password and wrote some hints on a sticker. Edgar wants to see her shopping list to pick the perfect gift for Valentine's Day. So in Erica's absence, he tries to log in. Let's take a look at the hints. Can you help him crack this code? It's not just a list of products, see? The correct password is pilot. Today is Edgar and Erica's wedding day. Man, they move fast. In the morning, the bride is getting ready. First of all, she goes to the shower for 20 minutes. When she returns to her room, oh, no. she finds out that someone had stained her wedding dress. Only the bridesmaids had access to this dress. So Erica questions them. Lily says, in the last 20 minutes, I was chatting with your mom in the living room. She can confirm my words. Rosie says, I'm not proud of it, but I was in the kitchen secretly eating some snacks prepared for the wedding dinner. And Daisy says, I've been dealing with a flower shop. They delivered the wrong flowers. Can you guess who stained the dress? It was Rosie. There's the same mud under her shoes. It's time to start the ceremony, but Edgar is missing. His mad ex-girlfriend Zoe oh, no. is a witch. She sneaked into the wedding, caught Edgar, and cloned him. Erica finds Zoe and six different Edgars in the basement. Zoe says, I wanted to make some copies of Edgar to keep him with me. Now I have enough. You can take your husband back. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't remember who's the original. Can you help Erica spot the real Edgar? The third one. All the others have paranormal powers. The wedding begins, but there's a thief among the guests. Can you spot this person? It's this innocent-looking lady with two purses. Edgar and Erica are going to India for their honeymoon. Can you see what's wrong with their plane? Open fire is prohibited on board. The stewardess must know that. After landing, Edgar and Erica take a taxi and go to their hotel. Suddenly, they see a family of ducks crossing the road. Erica takes a picture, but unfortunately, it's unfocused. Can you count the exact number of ducks?
Let's take a look at one duck at a time. We can see two beaks, so there's another duck behind the first one. And here we have two little ducks near the bigger one. And this duck is single. So far, the overall sum is six. This guy is not a duck, it's a goose. But there's one more duck hiding behind him. And three more over here. So the overall number is 10. Erica and Edgar arrive at their hotel. Four employees greet them in the lobby, but one of them is an imposter. Can you guess who? Take a look at the logo of this hotel. It's a lotus with six petals, but the logo on this lady's badge has a five petal lotus. Therefore, she's a fake employee. The hotel manager gives the guys a key to the best room for the newlyweds. They go to check out the room, but when they see the interior, they immediately oh, ask no. for another one. Why? There's a transparent lizard crawling along the curtains. This potted flower has teeth, and someone is clearly peeping at them through the eyes of this portrait on the wall. Erica, Edgar, and their tour guide go hiking. They have three backpacks, one with sleeping bags and a tent, one with warm clothes and camping gear, and the heaviest one, a backpack with food. Each has to choose one backpack to carry. Erica readily agrees to take the heaviest one. Why? It'll be getting lighter and lighter after each camp. On the way, the guys decide to go explore the local caves. They walk inside and suddenly a landslide blocks the way back. There are four tunnels ahead, each with a sign telling you which dangers lurk inside. There's a family of evil wizards living in the first tunnel. They curse every human who dares to come in. The second tunnel is filled with venomous spiders. The third one is swarmed by bats, and the fourth tunnel is on fire. Which one do you choose to stay safe? They should pick the second tunnel. Spiders don't hurt people for food. Finally, the guys get outside and see a tree with many beautiful parrots. Can you count the exact number of birds in this tree? The task was to count the number of all birds, so there are 10 birds in this tree, including 6 parrots. In the evening, Erica and Edgar are walking in the city. They see a local parade, but there's a thief among the performers. Can you see him too? This guy is sneaking her bracelet. Cassie won a trip to a luxury resort in the Maldives. She goes there on a boat along with three other hotel guests. One of these billionaires is fake. Can you guess who? This guy sneaks silverware from the buffet and puts it in his bag. If he's really rich, why would he need that? Speaking of imposters, one of the boat crew members doesn't belong here. Can you guess who? This waitress hides a police badge under her floral garland. So she's probably working undercover. Finally, Cassie comes ashore. Three porters offer to carry her suitcase. Can you help her choose the right guy? The first guy is a runaway criminal. See this poster on the pier? The second guy is a ghost. He's too transparent for a human being. Therefore, Cassie should choose the third guy. 
the hotel manager offers Cassie three options to choose from. A room on the eighth floor with a gorgeous sea view. A luxurious apartment on the second floor with a garden view. Or a separate authentic bungalow on the shore. What would you choose? The first option doesn't exist because the hotel is only a five-story and there's neither an air conditioner nor a fan inside this bungalow. So Cassie should choose the second option. On the beach, Cassie meets triplets, Sienna, Gemma, and Emma. Emma borrows $20 from Cassie. The next morning, Cassie meets one of the triplets in the lobby, but they're so identical that Cassie can't distinguish them. We know for sure that Sienna always tells the truth, while Gemma and Emma always lie. What three-word question should Cassie ask in order to get back her $20? The correct question is, are you Gemma? Sienna, who only speaks the truth, would say no. Gemma, who always lies, would also say no. And Emma would say yes, because she's a liar. Therefore, if the answer is yes, Cassie can demand her money. And if the answer is no, Cassie can ask Sienna or Gemma to remind Emma about her debt. After breakfast, Cassie goes diving. She sees a lot of identical clownfish underwater, but one of them doesn't belong here. Can you spot the odd fish out? This one over here. Underwater, Cassie finds a treasure chest, but it's locked. Can you help her crack the combination lock? There are three turtles painted on the treasure chest. Each turtle has a certain number of rings on its shell. It's a hint. If we count the rings, she'll get the code. Eight, Four, five. Cassie opens the treasure chest and finds a pearl necklace. She goes to the local jewelry market hoping to sell it. John says, This jewelry is not so precious, but I can offer you $50 for one pearl. Noah says, Trash! These pearls are fake! $5! This is my last price! And Mia says, Madam, we can sell it at auction. Rich guys will pay hundreds of dollars for this necklace. I can be your agent and take 15% of the revenue. What do you say? One of these guys is a scammer. Can you guess who? Noah is wearing another person's work badge. Therefore, he had stolen someone else's identity. Cassie wants to buy a new swimsuit. She walks into a fitting room and sees these three pairs of legs. Can you guess who's broke? All three women have relatively new sandals, but let's take a look at their toenails. The first lady has an excellent fresh pedicure. The second one doesn't have any nail polish but maybe she just prefers to look au naturel. And the third lady has toenails with peeled nail polish. Therefore, she's the one who's broke. In the hotel lobby, Cassie meets two of her roommates, Tina and Jeff. One of them is a werewolf. Can you guess who just by looking at this picture? Tina is a werewolf. She has handcuffs on her leg. Cassie goes to the beach to sunbathe. There's a vampire on one of these sun loungers. Can you spot where exactly? This pile of ash on the right used to be a vampire. There's a wedding ceremony on the beach. Unfortunately, after dinner, all the males at this party turned into zombies. Can you guess which zombie is her husband?
It's this guy. He's wearing a ring. In the evening, Cassie arrives at an abandoned haunted village to film a video for her vlog. She spots five weird things about this place right away. Can you see them too? These orchids have teeth. Who left these huge claw marks on the wall of this house? It's summertime, but there's a snowman in the garden. There are two moons in the sky, and this cow doesn't have any shadow. Cassie returns to the hotel and sees a hot mess. Someone has been rummaging through her stuff. She interrogates three suspects. The maid says, I cleaned your room in the afternoon. All your clothes and personal belongings were neatly folded in the closet. When I left, I locked the door. The plumber says, I also entered your room in the afternoon to fix the toilet. Luckily, everything's fine now. And Cassie's neighbor says, I was listening to music with headphones, so I didn't notice anything weird. Who's lying? It's the plumber. He said he fixed the toilet, but it's still clogged. One of the hotel guests, Peter, likes Cassie. He wants to impress her and shows her some pictures from his travel blog. But Cassie spots a fake right away. How? Take a look at the wind direction in this picture. In the background, the wind is blowing to the left, but his hair is blowing to the right. Therefore, Richard had photoshopped himself. Someone had broken the most expensive statue in the hotel lobby. The manager interrogates four suspects among the guests to find out who's guilty. Melanie says, I'm not into art. I haven't even noticed this statue before. Steven says, Sorry, dude. I've been out skydiving all day long. Zach says, Don't worry. That sculpture was tasteless. I'm an art dealer and I can get you a new one. And Sophie says, I was chilling at the spa, so I didn't see anything. Can you spot who's guilty? <laughs> Melanie, she lost her left earring in the very middle of the crime scene. Cassie gets an invitation from three hotel guests. Gail shows her picture of a fancy villa and says, I'm a billionaire. You're welcome to come over to my villa and stay for as long as you want. Bella hands her two tickets to the opera and says, We can go together tomorrow night. And Ricardo just shows her the keys to his boat and offers a ride across the globe. But only one of these offers isn't fake. Can you help Cassie make the right choice? There's a for sale sign near the villa, so Gail's offer doesn't look trustworthy. Take a closer look at the gate on the opera ticket. It expired centuries ago, so Cassie should trust Ricardo. Cassie goes to the hotel restaurant to have dinner. There's a butterfly hiding among the buffet. Can you find it? It's over here. 